Warning, if you don't want to hear adult language, it's already too late to fuck off. This week's episode of The Scathing Atheist is brought to you by our Stay the Fuck Home live stream. This and every Saturday till this thing is over from 8 p.m. till 10 p.m. Eastern on YouTube. The Stay the Fuck Home live stream. If you're going to be trapped inside, you might as well be trapped with us. And now, The Scathing Atheist. <laughs> this is the coronavirus. Everyone who's out there <coughs> listening in your cars, thanks for helping me spread around. <clears throat> for those of you who have the common sense to stay home, just remember that you <laughs> did, in fact, evolve from filthy monkey men. <coughs> It's March 19th. And it's the first day of spring. Yeah, not the best year to have allergies. Well, no, it's not. <laughs> I mean, if you want the whole train to yourself, it is. I'm No Illusions. <laughs> I'm Eli Bosnick. I'm Heath Enright. And from Buzz Aldrin's New Jersey. There you go. <laughs> Cincinnati Swing State. And good husband Georgia. Sometimes we do a good one from Jersey. This <laughs> is The Scathing Atheist. On this week's episode, Christians will prove they can always outcrazy a public panic. Donald Trump tells us to be prayer the Ides of March. <laughs> and we'll meet a cult that was hiding in their homes before it was cool. But first, the diatribe. They say that when all you have is a hammer, everything looks like a nail and all I have is an atheist podcast, so I have to keep that in mind, right? I have to constantly ask myself, am I just slamming my atheist hammer around in hopes of finding a nail? Or does religion actually create or exacerbate every goddamn problem that has or will ever emerge in the universe? I mean, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying religion created this pandemic. I'm also not saying it didn't, though. Right. Like who the fuck knows the full extent of their anti-scientific bullshit? They've steered countless minds away from things like science in general and biology in particular. They actively stand in the way of shit like stem cell research, all while promoting a dangerous self-serving skepticism of objective fact. How the fuck do you begin to calculate all the breakthroughs that they've stifled, delayed or prevented? But we do not need to step into such esoteric realms to pin a flaming bag of blame on religion for this shit. I mean, Either I'm swinging Maslow's hammer like Donkey Kong is throwing barrels at me, or they've signed their name on this disaster like they were going to hang it in a goddamn museum. Like, consider this Robert Redfield motherfucker. I'm going to be honest, I'd never heard of this guy until the crisis broke out. He's the head of the CDC, and, and by the standards of the Donald Trump administration, he's more or less qualified. I and mean, that's a pretty low bar, right? He'd satisfy the qualifications for that sentence as long as he'd done a medicine thing once. So, But stay with me here. Redfield is a virologist who made a name for himself with pioneering AIDS research back when he was working at the Walter Reed Medical Center. But he also pissed away a ton of money on an HIV vaccine idea that he was later accused of radically overselling, accused to the point that the army did a misconduct investigation, actually. Ultimately, they said he didn't do anything wrong, but it shot his credibility with a lot of people and he retired from the army shortly thereafter. So why was a guy with such an obvious blemish on his career put in charge of the CDC? You know, let alone a guy who had pretty much zero experience running a big bureaucracy. Well, for that, we have to click on the tab at the bottom of his Wikipedia page that says, see also sexual abstinence. See, back when he was in his AIDS research heyday, he was a big proponent of abstinence only education as the chief means for halting the virus's spread. And that, of course, means that he was opposed to contraception. He stood between condoms and Africa in the 80s. That's a roundabout way of saying he killed people with AIDS. Now, you know, he's come out since then and said that, like, you know, maybe free condoms would be more effective than telling people not to fuck. But we have to wonder whether he really believes that or he's just trying to satiate the press. And what's more, the only goddamn reason anybody wanted him for this job is because we have to wonder about that. 
right? And now here we are, the fucking guy that religion brought to the party. Lo and behold, his only qualifications are loving the right dead carpenter and nobody outside of the Donald Trump Fox News circle jerk is denying that he and his CDC have fucked every outbreak monkey between Wuhan and Washington State in their response to this thing. And and every indication is that Redfield has just been staring into those headlights for weeks, wondering why the fucking car hasn't run him over yet. It's been a horrible clusterfuck precisely because the man at the top had no clue what he was doing. But it's not like the only person in charge that attained their position solely because of religious affiliation was this motherfucker. When it became clear that Redfield wasn't up to the task of helming the response, schmuck on the ranch turned to none other than Mike fucking Pence to take over in his stead. And as I'm sure you'll recall, he's only there because he won the hearts of evangelical bigots by holding his breath the longest as to whether Christian restaurants had to serve gay people. Look, as partisan as our politics have gotten of late, and, and many would say that's historically partisan, we still don't give a shit whether our doctors are Democrats or Republicans. If an American discovers a vaccine for this thing, we're not going to ask who we voted for in 2016 before we take it. If the CDC makes a recommendation, Democrats won't ignore it because it's a Republican controlled department. I mean, yes, Trump managed to inject partisan politics into the situation. We labeled it a Democratic fucking hoax. But by and large, Americans aren't buying into that. Pretty much all of us are abiding by the recommendation of our public health professionals, except, of course, as we'll discuss throughout this goddamn episode, religious people. Because as bad as our partisan politics have gotten, we're still willing to set them aside when shit really hits the fan. Sure, we're all going to retreat back to our own set of facts when this is all over. But Republicans and Democrats are going to come together on this shit, at least through the crisis. Christianity, though, will not. Their commitment to their idiosyncratic facts set is far greater than anything party affiliation can muster. Hell, you get religious enough and you're willing to die over this shit. Look, anytime you have a person obtaining an important job for some reason other than their qualifications, you should be worried. And not only does religion allow for that, it insists on it. You know, let me be clear what I mean here, because, I, you know, I'm sure there are people listening to this and objecting to the notion that this is somehow worse than partisan politics. They'll point out that, you know, this shit happens regardless of religion. Right. It's not like President Joe Biden would install a CDC head that had publicly spoken out against Obamacare, even if that person was the most qualified to do the job. And yes, that would be an example of letting a political consideration override a qualification. And that's fair. But that's an order of magnitude lower than what I'm fucking talking about. At least there's a very big difference between holding a minority view on policy and holding a minority view on biology. They're talking about your Jesus. We interrupt this broadcast bring you a special news bulletin. Joining me for headlines tonight are the main course and dessert to my appetizer, Heath Enright and Eli Bosnick. Fellas, are you ready to dig in? And before you ask, yes, I am vegan and room temperature. Oh, no. (laughs) Great. Eli's a grass-fed steak, basically, so (laughs) perfect. (laughs) Yeah, let's hope we get full on Heath in our lead story tonight. We're all trapped in act one of a zombie movie, and that makes it really hard to do headlines that don't have a holy fuck, we're all going to die feel to them, so... In an effort to spice up our coverage of the pandemic, I've decided to present our coronavirus stories this week in the form of a wacky quiz show. So, gentlemen, are you ready to play? Oh, you know I am, Noah. All right. Hands on your buzzers. That is not your buzzer, Eli. Mm, Agree to disagree. Is Uh, it buzz? All right. So first question. According to the Christian idiots we talk about on this show, what is the coronavirus? Is it a... A distraction so that Trump can purge the deep state. B, a North Korean bioweapon. C, Satan's way of killing old people so that socialism can thrive. Or D, all of the above. Oh, I know this. Heath. Uh, it's definitely D, all of the above. It's all of those things. Oh, that is correct. Base. It's one nothing. According to firefighter prophet and human body dragging accessory entrepreneur Mark Taylor, The virus is being used to distract the journalist while Trump takes down the secret satanic pedophile ring that Hillary was running. And to be clear, Taylor is a Trump supporter. (laughs) And he's very confused. Yeah, his explanation is that Trump engineered a deadly virus so that he could secretly round up journalists, business leaders and media personalities that fuck babies for the devil. And then hold a press conference with those people. Which was odd. Yeah. In D.C., like down the road from Comet Ping Pong. Yeah. Right. He's confused. It's the perfect crime stopping 
which is legal. Shit. Let me start yeah, over. Yeah, why wouldn't Wait. he want people to know? <laughs> of course, we also learned from Jerry Falwell Jr. this week that coronavirus was probably a North Korean bioweapon, which was said not in a spittle-filled tirade outside of a defunct public restroom in a dilapidated park, but rather on Fox and Friends. The spittle-filled tirade outside of a defunct public restroom <laughs> in a dilapidated park of cable news. <laughs> yeah, yeah uh, that tracks. By the way, Candace Owen needs a show called Fox and Black Friend. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yes. Okay, Noah, this all sounds pretty reasonable to me, but how is Satan involved? That is a great question, Eli. <laughs> well, according to right-wing watch up-and-comer Perry Stone, the virus Perry is, quote, Stone. almost like a spirit of Amalek that is trying to attack our older people, end quote. He goes on to explain that young people these days are the, quote, pro-socialist, pro-communist, give me your money and I'll do what I want with it group, end quote, because the irony of a preacher demonizing Christ's basic social philosophy and a lack of transparency when dealing with other people's money burns so goddamn bright he'll never need a bulb anymore. So that'll be nice. Yeah, if we wanted to attack old people, we'd push to cut back Social Security. We'd, uh, we'd come up with something that you're doing. Yeah. Yes, and as Andrew has made us clarify several times, we do not want to attack old people. Those tweets were jokes. Very elaborate, very specific <laughs> now, those might seem contradictory to the overly logical atheist mind, but when you can worship the guy who invented face cancer, his son, and a ghost, all while being a monotheist, accepting that coronavirus is a good, bad thing that Satan is using to take down his own pedophile ring is pretty easy. The perfect crime. <laughs> there it is. Wait. Nope. All right. Yes. Wait, wait. That was just the first question. Second question. According to religion... Which of the following is not a cause of the coronavirus? A, gay pride parades. B, all the non-parading gay stuff too. C, abortion and false gods. Or D, rituals where everybody puts their nasty ass mouth on the same cup. Eli. Uh, gonna go with D, 250 girls, one cup. That is right, sir. According to <laughs> Rabbi Meyer Mazuz, a gay pride Jewish. parade is, quote, a parade against nature. And when something goes against nature, the one who created nature takes revenge on him, end quote. And since vaccinations are against the natural bodily response to deadly diseases, I'm sure the good rabbi will maintain that standard even when one becomes available. All right. Well, once we get a vaccine, it's officially time for Jade Helm 19. We're doing it. <laughs> Anti-vaxxer FEMA cages inside every Walmart. Bugs, I want them to yeah. Yeah, bubbles. And they're not allowed to have it. They have to, they have to walk the walk on this shit. <laughs> My favorite thing about that story is that when you watch the video clip of the Israeli news while they're reporting yeah. it, <laughs> both anchors keep interjecting to be like, ah, oh, fuck that guy. Fuck this yes. guy's a fucking douchebag. <laughs> yeah, it's like cognitive dissonance. It's amazing. <laughs> Of course, homophobic pastor Stephen Andrew, not to be confused with far more accomplished homophobe Stephen Anderson, thinks Rabbi Mazuz is adding extra steps here and points out that no parade is necessary to anger the Almighty. He sent out desperate pleas for America to repent to, of, quote, LGBT, false gods, abortion, and other sins, end quote. You know, just in case any Christians were curious who to blame for the shit that's their guy's fault. Yeah, they're really bad at these conspiracy theories. They're not coming up with the right stuff. This is just Margaret Atwood trying to sell books. This is a real simple <laughs> one. Her husband knocks on her study door. Hon, I hate to do this, but chapter four just became the news again. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I know. <laughs> All right, but one thing that numerous religious leaders were able to quickly exempt from blame, though, was numerous religious leaders see the church of cyprus <laughs> announced that they have no intention to discontinue communion services since quote it would be blasphemous to think that christ's body and blood could transmit any disease end quote archbishop andrzej ziega sorry it's polish echoed with uh, that sentiment in a plea with polish catholics to continue attending services since quote christ does not spread germs and viruses end quote and if you're comforted by how far away you are from poland and greece i should also point out that monsignor charles pope of washington goddamn dc wrote an op-ed where he argued that it didn't even matter if communion spread disease <sighs> since spiritual health is vastly more important than physical health. 
Cool, cool. Oh, that's great that they believe that. So no more Christians allowed in hospitals then. That's <laughs> what's happening now. There you go. They're going to have it anyway, right? Great triage, Monsignor. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> made that decision for us. Okay, but for these three guys, that's a testable claim, right? Yep. Like, these guys should all be perfectly fine with eating a transubstantiated wafer that I held between my cheeks during a sweaty run. Put up or shut up, guys. <laughs> Put up or shut up. You wouldn't be able to hold it that whole time. All right, wait. I got another question for you guys. We're tied up here. According to Pastor Jonathan Shuttlesworth, who continues to say things publicly, even after guaranteeing that the U.S. would be spared from coronavirus because of how pro-Israel Trump is, pastors who shut down their churches over the deadly pandemic are A, socially responsible, B, looking out for the best interest of their congregants, or C, neutered pansies. <laughs> Heath. Neutered pansies. That oh. is correct. Yes. Yes, it's not just for those who shut down their churches. This also goes for people who remind their congregants to wash their goddamn hands. Quote, if you're putting out pamphlets and telling everybody to use Purell before they go into the sanctuary and don't greet anyone, you should just turn in your ministry credentials and burn your <laughs> church down. Wait, wait, what credentials? Yeah, right? <laughs> yeah, good <laughs> question. <laughs> He yeah. has like a diploma on his wall in his <laughs> ministry room. Yeah. This is my badge and my gun. I'm out. <laughs> he continues, you're a loser. Bunch of pansies, no balls, got neutered somewhere along the line and don't even realize it. What? End quote. <laughs> okay. Along what line? Yeah, right. You see this? <laughs> you see this? I stole this from the dumpster outside of the hospital and now, now I'm going to drink it. I'm a big boy. A big, a big manly boy. Yeah. <laughs> All right. I like this ice bath. I've got a tough one for you. During a live stream last week, televangelist Kenneth Copeland offered to remotely cure coronavirus for his audience if they were willing to reach through their computer screens and or TV screens to touch his oily what? A. Hair. B. Fish. C. Tate. Or D. Palms. Eli? Uh, secret answer E, poop. Mm. Oh, I'm sorry. That's incorrect. It's always going to be one of the answers that I... There's no secret answer. So, Heath, uh, for the steal? Uh, was it his palms? That is correct. That'll give you a two-point yes. lead. Damn it. All right, next question. Noted Christian prophetess Cindy Jacobs, who you'll remember for turning metal into bone, was able to stop the spread of the coronavirus by declaring it what? A. Banished in the name of Jesus. B. Illegal. C. A Mexican caravan. Or D. Unwelcome. Heath. Oh, well, I don't know the answer, but it's been the last choice on every question so far. So... I'm going to go with D, unwelcome. Oh, I'm sorry. What? That's incorrect. Yes. Great guess, though. Eli, for the steal. up the pattern. Uh, I'm going to go with B, oily poop. What? Uh, well, uh, no, okay, technically, you got it right because B was illegal, not oily poop. But B was correct because, yes, she prayed in nice. the name of Jesus and declared the virus illegal in God's earth. So <laughs> hey, that was two weeks ago. Somebody arrest Tom Hanks and we've got this covered. Oh, they are. Yeah. They are. And don't worry. <laughs> ICE is stopping all the tan coronaviruses and asking for paperwork as they yep. walk around. Yeah. So. Okay. I Great. mean, technically, putting babies in cages is social isolation. <laughs> Maybe ICE was just way ahead of its time. Oh, huh? Did you think about right. that? Final question. This one is worth double. So like every quiz we've ever done on this show, it's going to come down to the final question. Okay. Uh, Price is right rules here. Closest to the actual number without going over. After seeing government officials and health experts recommending that people cancel all non-essential gatherings and try not to congregate in large numbers, the New Life Christian Center of Austin, Texas, declared such efforts, quote, raw, unmitigated stupidity, end quote, and set a church attendance goal of how many people? Eli. Three kajillion. <sighs> it, okay. He's, uh, one dollar. Yeah, obviously it would be. All right, uh, Morgan, drum roll, please. The actual number is two hundred and fifty. So yes. it was a real number, no. but congratulations, everybody loses. Uh, well, 
Not if everyone at the New Life Christian Center of Austin kicks it. Seems like that's kind of a self-selecting way to make Austin even cooler. So, okay. silver lining. All there right, yeah, hells yeah. <laughs> and on the depressing admission that there were literally too many Christians have terrifyingly stupid reaction to genuine global threat stories for us to cram them into our fucking show without fundamentally changing the format, we're going to pause for a quick break and hand things over to my lovely wife, Lucinda. This quiz could have gone on for another I, I four had like hours. 16 Literally. more fucking stories. There <laughs> yeah. were so many more stories. A man wrote the Bible. A whore is what she was. If it's a legitimate rape. And it's a slut, right? Hey, cooking can be fun. Hey, I'm proud of a man. This week in Massage. All right, so I get that the whole headlines have just been dumb shit Christian said and or did with regards to the pandemic, but I've got to tell us out my nominations for the two dumbest comments I saw. The first one came from Lori Alexander. And you have to forgive me because this is a weekly show, so I don't get a chance to chime in on some of this shit right away. She said this in the bygone era of Friday, back when coronavirus was still just a Democratic hoax engineered to make Trump look bad. So, of course, his evangelical supporters were still in downplay mode, which is probably why she was so quick to point out how much less dangerous COVID-19 is than, say, trans people. So after assuring people that the virus is nowhere near as bad as bubonic plague or polio and therefore couldn't possibly be dangerous, she adds that, quote, many of the things going on in our culture are much more destructive to our culture than this virus or the stock market crashing, end quote. And you can bet your ass that she had a list of examples that included abortion, trans kids and pornography. And look, when it comes to things that are dangerous to Lori Alexander's culture, I'm all for them. That being said, I still think she's wrong. It's hard to imagine something more damaging to Lori Alexander's culture than a disease that disproportionately kills off the elderly and people too dumb to wash their hands. But to be fair, that was only the second dumbest non-presidential comment I saw about the outbreak since the last episode. For the gold medal, we'll have to shift gears and look to Lori Alexander later. Fast forward to Tuesday. It's four days later. Trump knew it was going to be a pandemic. He never called it a hoax. And we've always been at war with Oceana. And now Lori's job isn't to downplay the virus so much as to find a silver lining. And what silver lining did she find? Why, the way it's domesticating all those uppity feminists. Quote, the virus is clearly showing the great value there is to having mothers at home with their children. They can protect them from the virus and homeschool them. It's just the way God intended it to be. Maybe crisis always shows that God's ways are far superior to man's. End quote. And look, normally I'd be inclined to disagree with her across the board. But to be fair, I'd have to qualify it. Like if the man whose response we're talking about is Donald Trump, she's right. God never lied about how serious it was or used it to incite racism against Chinese people. All the non-existent people, whether dead or fictional, had better responses than he did. But even if she's partially sort of right accidentally, there's something about saying that 9,000 deaths and counting is worth it if it teaches working moms to barefoot it up in the kitchen. That really irks me regardless. Anyway, with hopes that some non-virus stuff will sneak its way into the news cycle before we talk again, I'll hand you back over to Noah, Heath, and Eli. Thank you, Lucinda. Next up in headlines in Deep Blue Sea Fake News. You know, one of the questions <laughs> we get most often here at The Scathing Atheist is, what's the most convincing argument you've ever heard for God's existence? And the truth is actually kind of boring because pretty much everything we've heard is tied for last place. I mean, yep. sure, there are more or less clever word tricks like the Kalam cosmological argument. There are weirdly emotional and awkward ones like when people email us and tell us that Jesus is the only reason they don't drink anymore. But right down at the bottom of the barrel with you just want to be gay and why are there still monkeys <laughs> are the Dead Sea Scrolls. Yeah. And they never seem to understand my argument from reluctantly gay. Like that, that's, <laughs> It's just like a simple one. Two words, Heath, and they're the same two I always use when you mention that interpretive dance. That's right, damn it. That oh, is get the right. message. Now, Regular listeners to the show will remember a couple of years ago when the Museum of the Bible in Washington, D.C., a $500 million museum owned by the same evangelical Christian family that runs Hobby Lobby, the people who brought you, Gross. we don't use UPC codes because they're the mark of the beast. Yeah. They acquired 16 
never before discovered fragments by, among other shady business dealings, literally giving money to terrorists. Yep. Now, those same listeners will also remember when five of those fragments uh, turned out to be fake when they were tested in 2018. Well, this year, fraud expert and my Valentine forever in a day, Colette Lowell, tested the rest of the paper scraps. And yes, you guessed it. They are all fake as well. Mm -hmm. (laughs) I'm so happy about this. (laughs) And now the Hobby Lobby people want to speak to the manager of the the, the black market for ancient Iraqi relics. Where they <laughs> oh, and of course, we should also keep in mind that like when the first five came back fake, their reaction was to not test the other ones for years. Yep. Right? Let's be clear on that. <laughs> Interesting. Now, I should explain just how awesome Miss Lola is. And no, it is not just because she is pulling off the helmet hair that most women have been too afraid of since 1950. Huh? No, Lola had a hunch that maybe the Museum of the Bible might not be super, how do you say, honest about whether or not one of their most expensive exhibits was fake. So before she agreed to test the Dead Sea Scrolls, she insisted that, quote, museum officials wouldn't be allowed to offer any input. Her report would be the final word on those artifacts, and the information would be made public either way so the museum couldn't bury the truth. End quote. (laughs) And the museum was like, what? Obviously, no. Obviously, we just do uh, like like that. These shovels are for different shovel things. (laughs) (laughs) All right. To be fair, though, you need a shovel to get through any museum of the Bible that's worth its salt, right? Exactly. (laughs) So, yeah, there's actually a fascinating article about this in National Geographic, link in the show notes. But an interesting fact from the article I read is not only are all 16 fragments fake, they're all fake in the same way and therefore were probably made by the same person, which means there's a good chance this tax-free Bible museum didn't just give money to terrorists. They got fucking duped by them. Yep. (laughs) Do we have any Dead Sea Scrolls? As a matter of fact, we do. (laughs) We do. (laughs) Just a second. I'm just going to grab this Sharpie. I'll be back in a second. Yeah, they're in the back. We keep them in the back. They're in the back. I have those. In the back. I'll probably have to look (laughs) for them for at least 18 minutes. (laughs) And in Blue Cloister Cult News, brilliant. we have a couple more things to report about the coronavirus. And this one has some good news and some bad news. First, the bad news. A large, secretive Christian cult is responsible for spreading a terrifying amount of coronavirus in South Korea. The good news, Park Won Soon, the mayor of the city of Seoul, is suing that group for murder. Because he gives no fucks, and I love him. Oh, Mm -hmm. I was afraid the only good news would be some number of dead members of a large secretive Christian cult in South Korea. But there's even more. Okay, great. (laughs) So South Korea is one of the countries that's been hit the worst by the outbreak so far, with over 8,000 diagnosed cases. Side note, here in the U.S., the number is somewhere between 3,000 and... Uh, 330 million. It's yeah. hard to say because we've been trying really hard not to fucking say, but regardless, super bad in South Korea too. And according to South Korea's Center for Disease Control, this religious cult I'm talking about is responsible for about 60% of all cases in the country. Okay. Okay. But to their credit, Their tradition of spitting in each other's mouths is way less creepy than the peace be with you thing we do here in the United States. That's true. That's true. So so the Christian cult, they're called the Shinchianji Church of Jesus, the Temple of the Tabernacle of the Testimony. Already (laughs) needs to get shut down just for the name. Are you kidding me? They also go by Shinchianji Church of Jesus for short. What? No, it's fuck you. Scotch Tot is available. Go with Scotch Tot. Scotch Tot. <laughs> and apparently they were told by the government to stop having big gatherings and to stop going all over the place and evangelizing because of, uh, you know, the disease outbreak. Well, <laughs> it turns out the cult is a bunch of idiots and liars. So they ignored the government's emergency safety orders like idiots, then lied about it and then caused about. 6,000 new cases that we know of and counting. Yeah. No, it's like the epidemiological version of 
them existing theologically, <laughs> I guess. Yep. <laughs> so, so, in response to this whole thing, Mayor Park decided to do some quick murder math. So let's go through that along with him. Most experts are putting the mortality rate somewhere between like 0.5% and 3.5%. So let's be generous to Our Lady of Plague, the cult over there, and call it 1% mortality rate. That means they've already caused about 60 deaths. So Mayor Park went to the prosecutor's office and said, hey, uh, I'd like to report a murder spree of 60 people so far because he's <laughs> the hero that Gotham deserves. This well, guy's the best. Yeah, Gotham, maybe. The, the hero South Korea deserves is a fatal ass worm that takes out the Kim dynasty, but that's he's pretty good. I mean, that would be the like most decorated ass worm in history if Trump hadn't already given that Medal of Freedom to Limbaugh. It'd be the second yeah. most decorated ass worm. <laughs> so, probably. So, hey, Mayor Park, Really hope you're listening. And we know you are. Because Big fan. we'd like you to move to the United States and become the next attorney general. Or, you know what? Even better, the next absolute monarch. Let's go with absolute monarch. You know, just for a few years while you prosecute all the ignorance-based murders. I'm thinking we start with religion blocking science and Religion teaming up with Republicans to block health care and equitable wealth distribution. There's just a lot of murder built into all that stuff. But on the bright side, we will have plenty of for-profit jails for those people, thanks to those same people. So that'll work. <laughs> We're job creators here at The Scathing Atheist. You're welcome, conservatives. You're welcome. <laughs> and in good A... News? <laughs> Can- Thank you. Thank you. Canadian Justice Minister David Lamenny has put forward a bill that would outlaw conversion therapy for kids and make it illegal to profit from doing it to adults, which feels like a weird loophole, but yeah. it's something. And this week, <laughs> well, I will take what I can get. <laughs> okay, so you can still run a conversion therapy for 18 year olds. It has to be financially mismanaged. Correct. Yeah, illegal. right. <laughs> if it's in the red, you're good. If they like buy a stupid sports car at the end of every year, it goes past their profits. What the fuck? Well, okay. So to be clear, because we've actually covered several of these stories recently, there's a big difference from a legal standpoint between telling people you can't do this to yourself and you can't do this to your kids, right? Like it makes sense. A solid 60% of the things I do to myself would be illegal if you did them to a kid. I, I feel like for Eli and Heath, that number is even higher. So Correct. for the record, well, they don't lump me in with the weird Eli. Things. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's just higher than yours. Um, but for the record, this is not a case of Canada trying to like, you know, grandfather in nonprofit adult conversion <laughs> therapy centers or anything. That's fair. You know, that's fair. That's worthy to point out. So in an interview with CTV News, Lametti tore into the practice of torturing children until they pretend to be not gay or trans, saying, quote, Conversion therapy is premised on a lie that being homosexual, lesbian, bisexual, or trans is wrong and in need of fixing. Not only is that false, it sends a demeaning and degrading message that undermines the dignity of individuals and the LGBTQ community as a whole. Contrary to what some might say, there is no right or wrong when it comes to who you are or who you love, end quote. Not adding, even if that person happens to be the no longer alive corpse of Phyllis Schlafly and your uh, business partners <clears throat> should respect that. You're right, Eli. He didn't add that. Okay. Very important. Well, no. Either way, <laughs> this is a great step forward for Canada. We're very proud of them. And Phyllis and I will be celebrating in the best way I know how. Absolutely not. Nope. No. Absolutely no. Well, okay, technically it's still social distancing, so you should be Mm-mm. proud of me. And finally tonight. Because she's dead. Yeah, yeah, got it. We got it. So before we wrap it up, we have one more update about the coronavirus. And much like a bunch of the news on this topic, it comes in multiple choice format news format. Uh, (laughs) One of the following is true. Either A, Trump tested negative for COVID-19. B, Trump tested positive and his in-house doctor who said he's 6'3", 235, that guy lied about medical information, or C, Trump never took the test and then got asked about what the test was like and answered, almost exact quote, 
hats test. <laughs> I mean, in defense of that doctor, he was probably sitting there going, oh, you want me not to test you for a disease statistically guaranteed to kill the worst sitting president in 50 years? Yes. Yes, you're good to go. Go ahead. I'm, I'm sorry, Eli, in 50 years? I mean, I'm sorry, I'm not, I, I won't defend Dick Nixon against much, but that's a little <laughs> harsh. Right? Like, even on the tapes, he didn't say anything as bad as the if they die in international waters, our numbers look better lines. That's so. true. That's true. All right, so here's the chain of events. Last week, it was reported that Trump was in contact with several people who later tested positive for the virus, including a Brazilian government official who sat at Trump's table during a dinner. And in response, Trump announced during a press conference that he did not need to be tested, but said he'd most likely get tested anyway. And then moments later that day, the White House released a letter from Trump's doctor claiming the president was low risk, despite him being literally the definition of high risk, according to the CDC. At which point, Dr. Anthony Fauci's face started twitching even more violently than it already was. <laughs> and Fauci continued his job of screaming real information into the void so people can go ahead and ignore it. Also known as being the chief of the National Institute of Allergy and Infectious Diseases. He's that poor guy. having a tough time. His job for the whole month has just been like, okay, everyone, so what we need you to do is wash your hands and murder each other for toilet paper? Because that's what nope. I'm going to do. I'm Please gonna don't. <laughs> Oh, I'm a doctor. Okay. <laughs> He's here gone. Yeah. He did Dr. Fauci deserves all the blowjobs when this is all <laughs> over. It's rough. I already donated several at modestneeds.org. Right. Everybody check it out. Go to modestneeds.org. They do not take blowjobs, let me tell you. <laughs> <laughs> no, they don't. Raw, let's be clear. <laughs> Strong guy. <laughs> and uh, by the way, this story gets even dumber. That night, after the press conference, <laughs> Trump allegedly got tested by the doctor who said that there was no need for Trump to be tested. And we were all told that the test came back negative. And that's when CNN reporter Daniel Dale started asking questions. I think he started with, uh, liar says what? And Trump said, what? So <laughs> Dale kept asking and he kept going and said, okay, uh, describe the test. And Trump said exact words, I've been very strongly tested. What? I'll have you know, <laughs> I got both the circle and both dots, so I am fine. <laughs> I, I now have the cootie shot. Yeah, not going to tell him it's actually two circles, yeah, but yeah, circles duh, circles. strongly yeah. tested. Damn it. That's good to know. Sarah Huckabee Sanders shoved a swab in his nose aggressively, <laughs> like more than normal. <laughs> cool. But, uh, that wasn't quite enough of an answer for for reporter Dale. So he asked very specifically, what was it like to take the test? Brilliant. And Trump responded again, exact quote, exact quote, not, not uh, something I want to do every day. You know, it's a little bit of a it's a little bit of good doctors in the White House. But, but it's a test. It's a test. <laughs> it's a medical test. It is, though. That's is correct, the end of though. my exact answer. <laughs> it is a medical test. So to be clear, hats would have been a step up from his actual response. Yep. It would have. God, I would have given anything in the world for someone, anyone who's just been like, sorry, quick follow up. Describe a medical test right now. Just describe any <laughs> medical test for us. You dancing? Yeah. He's dancing. Okay. Yeah. So uh, that's a very probable answer. C, he never took the test. So still hope, I guess. Yeah. Right? Fingers <laughs> right, crossed. Right. And on the silverest of silver linings, we're going to close off the headlines for the night. Heath, Eli, thanks as always. Donald Trump dance battle medical test. <laughs> and when we come back, we'll listen to a damn appropriate song about limiting unnecessary trips to the grocery store. Hey, podcast listener, are you stuck inside? Are you so bored you think you might die from it? Is constantly refreshing your social media feed slowly driving you insane? Well, then we'd like to invite you to the Scathing Atheist Stay the Fuck Home live stream this Saturday and every Saturday from 8 to 10 p.m. Eastern as long as we're all trapped in our houses. 
we'll be inviting along some of our funniest friends to play games, answer questions, and generally take our minds off whatever the fuck this is. The Scathing Atheist Stay the Fuck Home live stream on YouTube. This Saturday and every Saturday for as long as this shit lasts. Because if you're going to be stuck inside, you might as well be stuck with us. Okay, now it sounds like a threat. Well, it sound like kind of is. In their ceaseless effort to craft a parallel world for their children sanitized of facts, Christians have created their own schools, museums, movies, TV networks, news sites, novels, amusement parks, summer camps, comic books, and, of course, music. And in their ceaseful effort to make it good, their substitutes are invariably terrible, which sucks for Christian kids, but works out well for a segment that we like to call God Awful Music. So tell us, Heath, what will we be breaking down today? We watched Kathy Don't Go. <laughs> yeah, we did. <laughs> it's a music video about how Satan, the Prince of Darkness, went to <laughs> one particular supermarket and brought about the end of days in 1985 using near field communication. <laughs> <laughs> and Eli, how bad was this video? Okay, first off, need to thank Eric, who actually sent this to us. So thank you, Eric. Well, if you were sure any minute the world was going to end in 1974, and then, again, every time credit card technology has moved forward since then, but <laughs> you won't social distance because your cousin got the flu last winter and he turned out fine, you will love this movie. Oh, my God. All right, so this is one of the weirdest fucking things we've ever seen. To be clear, though, this music video was produced by a group that probably earns the title of crazy fucked up pedophile cult even more than the Roman Catholic Church. Ooh. All right. So I looked into these guys. This is a cult that was started by a guy named Dave Berg, not the Mad Magazine cartoonist. That would have been a way weirder story. <laughs> and he preached about the sacredness of child sexuality. Yuck. So no surprise. He and his organization have been accused of every kind of sex abuse you can name. Berg himself was accused of molestation by his granddaughter, his other granddaughter, his adopted son, his nanny's daughter, and others. Yeah, which you think would be weird for him to deny, right? After preaching that, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's like if all the Jews got together and we were like, beards? We never had beards. What are you talking about, beards? <laughs> right. Oh, and uh, speaking of Jews, Berg was also an outspoken anti-Semite and racist. He blamed Jews for pretty much as much shit as your Aunt Kathy blames Obama for. And he said black people were being used by the Antichrist to bring about the apocalypse, which he predicted would happen in 1974. Also, there aren't many <laughs> pictures of this guy because, and this is amazing, he insisted that his religious followers always scratch his face out of photos and replace <laughs> it with a pencil drawing of an anthropomorphic lion. Uh, which, by the way, I would also prefer that. So if anyone is trapped at home right now, feels like going through my Facebook photos, getting to work. Just yeah, saying. you guys have some time. I'll support some independent artists. And and you may have heard of this cult, by the way. It's called the Family International, but it used to be called Children of God. Among his acolytes, Berg's acolytes, were Rose McGowan and River and Joaquin Phoenix. They were all raised in this cult. Yep. And uh, by the way, this cult would use a technique called, exact words, flirty fishing to get more people. Mm -hmm. And that was just like... I'll fuck you if you if you join my cult. Yep, yes, yep. it was <laughs> fucking <laughs> people into the cult. They they fucked over like two hundred thousand people into the cult with flirty fishing, according to the stats I read. Also, they believe that their whole cult is in a sexual relationship with Jesus. Yes, yeah. they do. They're supposed to imagine Jesus is there during sex and masturbation. And <laughs> this is my favorite part. Yes, the male members they're supposed to. Imagine themselves as women, so that's not gay. Yes. Correct. Yep. Also, just about the flirty fishing thing, I just want to say, I mean, atheists do that too. It's just it's just called fucking and it it works great to be yeah, fair. It works so really, really well. <laughs> All right. You don't have to join our cult though, but No, really, yeah, exactly. But you do. Different. You do. 
Um, if you weren't so, fucking, yeah, and then when, you when fuck? atheists start flirty fishing, you usually have to call someone, and there has to be an investigation. <laughs> it's not a good thing. It's true. Marsh tells on you. So tattletale. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So what we watched though was the guy who started that cult's fever dreams acted out in the style of a 1980s pop music video. And I'm going to go ahead and say it. It's weirder than I'm making it sound. Yes, now. it is. Yes, it is. <laughs> All right. So we're going to open this whole thing up. On a, there's a girl and she's at the table and she's listening to a hip radio DJ urging her to head on down and get her 666 barcode implant today. <laughs> hey, you hip cats and Sally Smashers, get a tattoo on your forehead that's the same as Apple Pay. It's exactly <laughs> that. <laughs> yeah. And it's a weirdly super honest commercial from Satan for his thing. Like, he's thinking like, all right, you know, we'll just lean into it. Yeah, uh, right. Well, <laughs> own the triple six thing, right? <laughs> also, she's eating an apple here, which is uh, super subtle. Oh, I didn't notice that. <laughs> it's too subtle for me. It was way too subtle. So Kathy stands up. She's going to go get her devil stamp. And then the song starts. And as she's walking, she's walking to the grocery store. And as the music starts, we watch these people. We're cutting over to these people who's... Faces have been sewn into happy expressions, dancing around in between shots of Kathy walking to the store. <laughs> oh, the outfits are fantastic. Everyone is dressed like they got kicked off the set of Saved by the Bell. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, this dance troupe is the greatest thing ever. Uh, they exist somewhere in real life. Like, yeah. we could find these people. We could... Like, they reenact this when they get together and hang out. We need to find <laughs> oh, God, I hope so. It's so crazy. So it's like five Christian girls, clearly from this cult. Yeah. But also a tattoo from Fantasy yep, Island. Yep, he's there too. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Oh, wait. There, we're going to get the Satan tattoo. Maybe it's like a reference. Ooh, <laughs> call forward. Yeah. You think they were doing that? All right. So the song starts, the lyrics start off, the, the repeated refrain that'll get stuck in your ear for 60 years after you watch this video is, Kathy, don't go to the supermarket today. We cut to this fucking supermarket that's filled with like fucking bad guys from an Inspector Gadget episode or okay. something. Okay. Okay. <laughs> So, yeah, there's, there's there's definitely Inspector Gadget bad guy with, like, the weird trench coat. But there's also, like, Cobra Commander's helicopter pilots yes. are guarding mm. the operation there. Why are there helicopter pilots? Great what does question. that have to do with They're going to parachute out right before it explodes. I know that they are. <laughs> <laughs> we should also point out that, like, the supermarket <laughs> is, is otherwise unchanged except for the evil people in it. So it's yeah. like... Bread four ninety nine. Ominous Inspector Gadget villain. Cheese food two ninety nine. <laughs> <Yes. laughs> All right. So then we get to chorus, which is um. Here's the lyrics. Kathy, don't go to the supermarket today because there's a very strange man at the checkout stand, and there's a laser scanner where you put your hand. And, and as he says that they show this UPC <laughs> scanner, and they desperately want it to look evil, but it's it's a UPC <laughs> scanner. It's just a scanner. <laughs> You can't make something evil and scary when it goes boop. <laughs> that's, that's just silly now. Yeah. Evil inventory management. Boop. No. Hard, hard no. to make a boop evil. It's true. She goes, the lyrics go, Kathy, don't go to the supermarket today. Without a computer ID, there's no way to pay. And then we, oh, and also I, we should point out, trench coat sunglasses bad guy he's wearing a hello my name is sticker with 666 drawn sloppily onto it basically the right he? i missed that <laughs> this is also where we see the first group of people who've got it on their head oh yes and i, I know we've said yeah. it before but it bears repeating who goes for head when hand is an option <laughs> it's, a right? weird pick. it's a weird choice it's a really weird pick yeah so you get apparently like a black face or like a gray face, no, gray face. Yeah. Process. Mm -hmm. if you go for the head one and you get the barcode and yeah again why who, who goes for the face like that means you would have to wave your head over that scanner <laughs> just trying it over like, it won't boot me uh move on i need yeah, to get in sideways just, move over yeah. let me get behind it i need to get behind the counter oh all right and then we get the strongest lyric in the song in my opinion i know there's a sale and a special on rice, and you can buy beans <laughs> at a giveaway price. Yes. <laughs> and by the way, this fucking town, th this town goes 
nuts for a good rice sale. It's like trying to buy <laughs> toilet paper at Walmart in this motherfucker. That's right. <laughs> Look, Satan has many tools at his disposal. Lust, anger, unbeatable prices on <laughs> rice. <laughs> We are slashing prices on <laughs> rice bags. It has gone insane. <laughs> <laughs> but then, okay, and then the lyric goes, but that's just their way to get you down there. What you don't know is that they're everywhere. Okay. Herculean well, effort mean, to get that into the rhyme <laughs> scheme, by the way. <laughs> feels like the face paint and the forehead barcode are going to catch the eye. You can't see, you can't, you, you don't know that they're everywhere at that point? Well, yeah, it also, those lyrics make no fucking sense, right? I was willing to forgive that whole rice price rhyme when I thought it was going somewhere, but this sentence is ridiculous. What does their <laughs> ubiquity have to do with their bean prices? This is insanity. <laughs> anyway, okay. It carries and on. We also we also get another dance kind of oh, yes. and fucking <laughs> like hip hop, tai chi, whatever the fuck they're doing. I love it so much. <laughs> All right, so the, the song continues. Kathy, don't go to the supermarket today. They had a special program on the TV last night explaining calmly why these things must be done right. <laughs> so there's a TV special made by Satan explaining his plot. That's that's what's happening. Like you said, really, really leaned into it this time. Yeah. yeah. And, oh, and as he's singing this, by the way, we're watching a girl get her Mark of the Beast in the background. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and apparently this forehead tattoo is going to get done at the dentist by the x-ray machine. I, yeah, clearly. Which was confusing. And you're going to wear the bib. You're going to wear a bib <laughs> like yes. you go like at the dentist. Yeah, it's the same strange. as same as the dentist one. They put the bib on you and walk out of the room. You sure this is okay to point directly <laughs> at my head? It's fine. I'm leaving yeah, the room the now. It's cool. It's There's fine. a little bit of Lead in there. You're hold fine. that knife I put in between your gums. Still, yes. yeah. <laughs> Just hold the Bible up along your chest. And yeah, you're there you hit by this yeah, thing. you're fine. fine. Yeah, and uh, also we we see here that they have a um detachable like shower head scanner for the people with the forehead ones. Yep. So like I was like, all right, now I feel stupid. Yeah, yeah right. Yeah, no, makes sense. You could go to get the forehead way. one. They could just boop <laughs> you with the shower head thing. Meanwhile, by the way, they've sung Kathy don't go to the supermarket today 50 billion times. Kathy's dumb ass is still just walking to the supermarket. <laughs> they show at a point at this point they cut to the supermarket. So they're scanning somebody's hand. I wanted so bad for them to have to drag it over six times like you had to back in 85. <laughs> oh, <But no. laughs> so good. So they have to call. She's doing the self checkout. They have to call over the manager to punch yeah. in her code. <laughs> I was, this seems um, slower Satan, than if you Satan just to the front. Satan to the front. <laughs> <laughs> thing. I don't want to memorize the code for a grape. If you could just come over here <laughs> and be the checkout clerk. All right. And this is where we get the bridge. Oh, Kathy, can't you see what they're trying to do? And I'm like, I have the benefit of the lyrics and I don't even know what the fuck they're playing. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody, this is where everybody like turns around and shows us their UPC symbol foreheads <laughs> with like oh. a little chorus line. Yeah. This is also where they do a cutaway to the dance troupe and they, for no reason, do a Charlie's Angels pose. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and apparently Satan's in the back of the supermarket watching in the security camera. Yeah. And the trench coat guy is just like a minion or like a high level Satan manager guy. <laughs> and Satan's making sure, like, if you don't do the shopping cart choreography, he gets mad. Right, yeah, that's how we know that they've been, like, had their souls sucked out as they are all, like, you know, going to get beans symmetrically. And Kathy, yeah. she's, like, watching this and she's going, like, wait a minute, no human being would buy beans so symmetrically. <laughs> so she, she knows something's up. And and we go back to Satan for a second, and he's in the back being like, nice, they're doing the routine. <laughs> yeah. I love that that's a part of Satan's plan in these people's minds. He's like, yes, once your soul's been taken over, we'll hunt Christians for sport. No, I was thinking, you know, just like go at a diagonal as you're buying canned mandarin oranges. Right, <laughs> you <Yes>. know. <laughs> Yeah, so Kathy, and then the lyrics, by the way, say, this isn't just a new craze. They want to make us their slaves. Apparently, it's supposed to be obvious how UPC symbols on our heads help them with that. Um, I don't know. <laughs> so then at this point, 
some dude in the video that we haven't met yet just runs up and tells Kathy what the name of the song is. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's like, no, you can't go to the supermarket. We have a whole there's a whole there's a chorus and there's a bridge and everything. <laughs> so they run off. She doesn't go into the supermarket. She listens to the lyrics. Yeah. <laughs> right. And then the, the the evil trench coat guy, like for a second, he's like, all right, we're going to run after her. And then he's like, no, 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 no. And the, the helicopter pilot guys have to be stopped by him. He's like, no, 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 no guns, no guns. As they start to pull out their guns. I know I had you guys bring guns, but <laughs> so. there's, they got past safe. If you get all the way to the corner, that's safe. Yeah. So. I thought maybe there'd be a helicopter chase here and then, you know, things would make sense. But right. <laughs> no, 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 sadly, no. Satan's just going to let this one go, you know, take the loss, set up shop at a different supermarket, find a different linchpin of humanity besides <laughs> Kathy? I don't know. I guess, yeah. And despite the fact that no one's chasing them, Kathy and this dude keep running all the way to the to the woods where they meet up with a group of campers yes. that are waiting for them. I know I have to give you this fucking lyric. This is so goddamn amazing. It says, Kathy, don't go to the supermarket today. Kathy, let's leave while there's still real time to get away, as the actual Whoa. goddamn lyric. <laughs> so clumsy. <laughs> Honey, don't worry. Just take my hand. We can make it even if we have to live off the land. <laughs> Seems like an extreme solution for avoiding self-checkout, but okay. Yeah. And I just want to say those lyrics would have been a lot funnier if I hadn't said that to my wife earlier today. Like it's, just, it's, a, it's a weird week for those lyrics. Eli's got a rose of sorghum just started in his backyard. <laughs> have you know that there's a black bean burger? It's I don't want to get into it. <laughs> All right, so yeah, so the two of them go off to live off the land, and then we witness the last unironic leap in the air with your arms up freeze. Amazing. <laughs> It's that's literally how it ended. Yeah. Literal jumpy freeze frame. It's the greatest. <laughs> Did they join a cult of the mountains and the land that day? Yes, they, they ran did. Straight, straight from the supermarket yes. she onto a mountain. Stop. Yep. She and didn't they even stop and boo, pick up some now. shit. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. They wander off great. into the woods to starve slash freeze to death in jean shorts. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Bad news. <laughs> Satan's really slow playing his plot because it's, uh, you know, a lot of years since 1985. He hasn't really pulled the trigger yet. Those guys They're are still there on, on the that mountain. fucking like, mountain. Oh, yeah. come on. <laughs> Satan gives a press conference. He's like, and then one day in the middle of winter, like a miracle, all those mountain cults would be gone. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, I'll tell you what, audio medium or no, I feel like we have to end this bit with us leaping up and doing a freeze frame. So while we prep for that, we're going to sign off from yet another edition of God Awful Music. Are you guys ready? Ready. Go. Nope, wasn't ready. Wasn't ready. <laughs> Ooh. Before we make with the outtake tonight, I wanted to express our sympathies to all of our listeners around the world that are listening to this under quarantine or some other level of house arrest. I also want to cordially invite you to a live stream that we're going to be doing on Saturday. Uh, we figure there's no better time, you know, to make with some bonus content. So we're going to be doing a live stream. It's like a game night and a QA. and a and we're going to do it every Saturday night as long as the public health professionals are recommending social distancing. It's going to start at 8 p.m. Eastern time. We're still hashing out all the details, uh, so I can't fill you in on much. But check our Facebook page or follow at PIATpod on Twitter to stay up to date. Anyway, that's all the blast we've got for you tonight. But we'll be back in 10,022 minutes with more. If you can't wait that long, be on the lookout for a brand new episode of our sister show's hot friend, God Awful Movies, debuting at 7 a.m. Eastern on Tuesday, and an even newer episode of our half sister show citation needed, debuting at noon Eastern on Wednesday. Obviously, I'd be socially distanced even after the pandemic if I neglected to thank Keith Enright for his virulent attacks on dogmatism, Lucinda Lusions for her feverish commitment to equality, and Eli Bosnick for his diseased sense of humor. I also want to thank the coronavirus for this week's Farnsworth quote, but ultimately that doesn't make up for all the killing people it's been doing, okay? Okay. But most of all, of course, I want to thank this week's best people. Ashling, Emiratus, Chris, Karen, oh shit, a bear, Eric, Philip, Matthew, Kyle, Colin, Jake, Arnaud, Madeline, Julie, and Roar Becca. Ashling, Emiratus, Chris, Karen, and oh shit, a bear whose asses are so sexy toilet paper was desperately trying to get to them this week. Eric, Philip, Matthew, Kyle, and Colin whose dicks are so big they can't stay six feet away from all the people without calculating launch windows. And Jake, Arnaud, Madeline, Julie, and Roar Becca whose immune systems are so badass coronaviruses have issued them warnings. Together, these 15 fabulous 
fabulous free thinkers forked over funding to fight the fabricated fuckery of faith this week by giving us money. Not everybody has the money it takes to give us money, but if you do, you can make a per-episode donation at patreon.com slash skatingatheist, whereby you'll earn early access to an extended ad-free version of every episode, or you can make a one-time donation by clicking on the donate button on the right side of the homepage at skatingatheist.com. And if you'd like to help, but you trade in Earth money and that shit just got tight, you can also help a ton by telling a friend who's stuck in social isolation about our shows. It's never been a better time to recommend podcasts to your friends. Legal services for this podcast, of course, are provided by the law offices of P. Andrew Torres. Tim Robertson handles our social media, and our audio engineer is Morgan Clark, who also wrote all the music that was used in this episode, which was used with permission. If you have questions, comments, or death threats, you'll find all the contact info on the contact page at skatingadius.com. Finally tonight, that was a penis-sized joke. Great. Fun. The preceding podcast was a production of Puzzle and a Thunderstorm, LLC. Copyright 2020. All rights reserved.